Many, if not all of us, know of someone or are someone who's dealt with the devastating effects of anxiety and depression. Methods for dealing with these issues can be very charged. It's a subject that's often difficult to discuss for a variety of reasons, shame, guilt, anger, frustration, despair, but they are subjects that need to be addressed, least of all because it's becoming a crisis for youth and adults today. And what those struggling need most are advice and strategies that actually work. And as you'll learn in this episode, more often than not, that does not include medication. The research is becoming very clear that most people on antidepressants are still depressed. Medication is simply not the savior we hoped it would be. The truth is that the greatest limiting factor to overcoming anxiety and depression are your own limiting beliefs and the erroneous or outdated conclusions you have about this topic. What you don't know and what you think you know that's just not true are hurting you. After decades of research, studying, and multiple lifetimes of experience, including our work with thousands of youth and families across five continents, we've come to some very solid conclusions about anxiety and depression, what causes it, how to prevent it, and how to overcome it for good. We guarantee that some of what we discuss in this episode will not be popular, but it is scientifically, biologically, and psychologically based, and it will work for the vast majority of people, 97, 97% or more. So it's worth considering. Listen to this episode now. This episode is sponsored by our Extraordinary Family Life Formula. Discover simple tools for creating more order, peace, prosperity, and love in your mind, emotions, finances, and relationships. Plus gain the ability to persuade and influence your family with diplomacy. Click the link in the show notes to become a member of the formula today and meet live with Greg and me every month for workshops covering every area of family life. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Extraordinary Family Life podcast. Glad to have you guys here. Thanks for being awesome humans, and I mean that. And you might be like, you don't even know me, man. But I'm sure you're awesome. Taking time to listen to a podcast, that's something. That's something. And you're listening to a podcast about having an extraordinary family. And and I'm sure you're a great person. And and even if you've made mistakes, which you have, (laughs) because you're human, we all have. Man, it's all right. It's all good. And you're you're good. I want to, like, emphasize this. You, it's, it's like glorious to be a human being. There's a sacredness to just being alive. And there's something about it that's so special and so unique and so beautiful that every morning we can wake up and literally, no matter what our circumstances or conditions are, we can wake up and just be thrilled, in awe, to be alive and to be a human with all that means in capacity and potential to think and speak and love and and live and have memories and cool experiences and to influence each other and interact with each other and and that we have the power in our lives to be a a catalyst for change or, or at, at the best level, for me at least, is to become a great force for good in the world. I mean, what 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 other creatures on the earth can just exert energy and focus to massively transform their whole reality? Right? It's just it's such a beautiful thing to be alive. It's so awesome. And unfortunately, though, I think a lot of people are discounting that nowadays. Too There's much. Too Far many too people much. that view human beings as a cancer on the earth, mm-hmm. and we should save the planet and kill the humans. Yep. And sadly, too many good people who discount themselves. I think, um, by and large, with all the people we've been able to work with, thousands of people across five continents, I I have always seen that the greatest limiting factor in a person's life is their own limiting beliefs about themselves. Which ties in perfectly with what we will be talking about today. Yes. So we have to preface today because it is a very charged subject, right? There's, There's lots of charged subjects, like... Uh, money and politics and sex and religion, religion, like very, very charged. People get so, we get so caught up and so 
intense about these things where I think if we could um, step back, chillax a little bit and contemplate things, discuss them, have people share their perspective and ideas. And even if we disagree or maybe we haven't thought about it like that before, just just sit with it for a minute. Say, I'm going to chew on that for a little bit instead of having these hard, rigid you have to be right or you have to be wrong or just all this stuff. Just like, well, let's just sit with it. And so what we're going to talk about today is charged like that. And I guarantee to you some of what we say will not be popular. Um, but there's something to it. And so our invitation is, again, this is shared with love. This is shared with the, the best intent. We're not trying to make anybody wrong. And we're not trying to throw anybody under the bus. We are just trying to offer um, decades of learning and research and experience in our own lives and raising seven children and working with thousands, literally thousands of youth Mm -hmm. and families across five continents and dozens of countries. We've had multiple lifetimes of experiences because of the way we do life. And we've learned a lot of amazing things. Um, We've, we've averaged, you know, a book a week for over two decades uh, of that across multiple uh, genres and, and across the whole spectrum of, of learning. And so we've, we've come across a lot of stuff. So what we're sharing here isn't like our, we've been sitting in a closet thinking up ideas that are, <laughs> I think this will work. It's <laughs> like we've been out um, exploring and reading from the, the brightest and best minds across time and space and interacting with people from all walks of life, like and literally all walks of life. So yeah. if, you, if you're sitting here listening to this today and say, well, it doesn't apply to me. I'm the exception. No, no, no. We have been in the poorest shanty towns in Africa and little isolated colonies of the leprosy affected in India. And we've been in some of the biggest mansions and the most the wealthiest places on the globe. From Central America to Europe to the U.S. To, yeah, across, across, across the globe. So this, this stuff is awesome. And like I think I want to add this part because... I feel it adds a lot of validity and and explains why we have so much confidence in the opinions we're going to share today because a lot of the things we're going to talk about today are things you've been talking about and believed firmly even as long as 15 years ago or more. More. Some of the stuff I'm going to share today I started thinking about when I was a homeless teenager right? dealing with some of the things we're going to talk about. Exactly. And the point being that back then, these viewpoints you had were definitely unpopular. Like the prevailing thoughts or wisdom of the time were absolutely contradictory to what we're going to talk about. But now... And some of that has stuck around, so there's still plenty of that today. It has. But I would say more and more, especially the scientific research that's coming out is absolutely supporting and correlating what you have believed all this time. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was things I learned from my own experience and then working with others like, hey, wait, wait a minute, let's, let's figure out what actually works here. And what's interesting, I, I, and I have to point this out and really, really emphasize this. This will work for the vast majority of people, like vast majority as in like 97, 98, 99 percent. There's there's a tiny percentage of people that won't work for. And don't be quick to throw yourself into that tiny percentage. Right. Some of you be like, well, that must be me. I'm the exception. And I think, and this is where it starts to get unpopular, but it's so important. It's so easy to play the victim. You know, there's, there is a big difference between being an actual victim, and that does happen. There are predators and perpetrators and people who get victimized. There are victims. And then there's people who slip into victimhood or what we like to refer to as victimville. Like they, they take up residency in victimville. And trust me, I was the mayor. I was in victimville, man. I wanted to be there. I wanted to blame everything else and everyone. And it was always circumstances and situations and other people couldn't possibly have been me because I'm a good person, or at least trying to be a good person. And when things didn't work out, I, you know, I just didn't understand taking full ownership. Mm-hmm. And ownership can be painful it because painful. it's like, it, you're like, oh, you mean you're telling me like, it's my fault. It's my fault. And yes, we are. So that's actually good news. It hurts, but it's good news because if you're, if you have any part to play in this, if you have any fault, that's excellent news. Right. Because you can change it. 
Mm-hmm. Like it, it, what it's telling you is like you have the power. The power is back in your hands. It is not out outside some outside force that's controlling you. Right. That you what, are literally a victim too. Right. So you're right. It is. It's painful. Ownership is painful, but it's also liberating because it means you actually have the power to do something about it and to make a change. So that's exciting. That's very exciting, actually. Okay, so we have to have a disclaimer here that neither Rachel nor I are psychiatrists or psychologists or philosophers. Uh, philo- we, 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 we are wannabe philosophers. Um, <laughs> wannabe we are, psychologists. We are not doctors. We are not dentists. Lawyers, dentists. <laughs> Anything else? The only thing we that are, ends with we are. "ist" that we are is maybe enthusiasts. <laughs> we love to learn and share what we're learning. So um, it's almost like you have to do a legal disclaimer here. Please seek medical advice. Although we would say, but please, that, don't. but please don't. <laughs> and like that's where we stand. We're like, no, because ah, and, and we're going to get into this. But for here's one one classic example. And we, we just read this from The Collapse of Parenting. Mm-hmm. Excellent book. Highly recommended. By a man who is an actual psychologist. And he's going around the world um, teaching and speaking. And one of the things he pointed out was how, for some crazy reason, and we know it's fed by pharmaceutical funding, in this country, they hand out drugs like nobody's business. And they being the doctors. Doctors are prescribing I, I don't remember the numbers. It was absurd. The numbers were insane. Like it's compared to like... Europe or Australia or New Zealand, it was insane. Somebody walks in and is like, hey, I'm feeling a little anxious. Oh, drugs, 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 drugs. Where there, they're like, oh, well, okay, that's normal. It's normal to feel <laughs> anxious thoughts and to feel a little depressed and discouraged. That's called life. Exactly. And here are some things you can do to manage that. We're here the, uh, the, in the States. It's like, oh, I guess you need drugs. More drugs, 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 drugs. We're pushing drugs. And it's just a money trail. And we're, we're going to dive deeper into that, but, but it's a big I, problem. I do remember, I think he said almost like it's prescribed 80% more here in the U.S. than in any other country, yeah. especially Europe, definitely New Zealand and places like that. It's and we might think, of. well, oh, our lives must be harder. <laughs> or maybe it's worse over here. And it's like, that's what I'm telling you. Don't think yourself to be the exception. Mm-hmm. This, that's one thing I got in trouble with early on. Which is hilarious now. Looking back, it, it's a little bit ridiculous. And, and I think it's a phase that maybe all teenagers go through as you're, mm-hmm. as you're learning and understanding. You think you're the only one. And no one else understands. Nobody else thing. understands. I remember thinking that literally. like Nobody else knows what I'm going through, suckers. And, the, and I was so angry and so like, they don't get it. They don't know what it's they like to be me. My me. life's hard. They don't understand what I'm going through. And then luckily within, within a short time, I was in Peru in just living in, in villages and neighborhoods with just abject poverty and suffering. And I remember just like this mental slap in the face of like, how dare I ever <laughs> have thought that my life was so hard and exactly. nobody understood what I was going through. Like my life was a walk in the park. Being homeless in the U.S. was way better than what I've seen in the years since then. Mm-hmm. Far, far better. And I literally remember getting down and thinking, geez, my life was actually easy and cushy. The, these people who are really suffering down here, they would have thought my life was like yeah. they died and gone to heaven. Can and we I trade like, places, please? My, my <laughs> poor, nobody gets me. And, and so the first thing I want to say out the gates here is start noticing, being aware of your thoughts and catch yourself when you start believing you're the exception, that nobody else knows how hard it is, how bad you have it. Nobody else gets you. There are 8 billion people on this planet and an estimated... 100 billion that have lived on the planet, I promise people get what you're going through and have gone through worse. Right. You're not the only one. You are not the only one. And, and, and let that be a comforting thought. Mm-hmm. Not, not like, oh, great, everybody. I mean, don't, don't let your thoughts go negative. Be like, okay, wait, other people have been through this and they've come out of it. I and can they too. have wisdom to share about yeah. it. And, and again, again, we want to play the exception of like, well, they just got lucky. Well, they were able to get out of it because of X, Y, Z. And, and see, there we go again, victimizing ourselves mm-hmm. with our thoughts. And so that's going to be the first place you've got to stop playing the victim. Stop making excuses. 
Stop blaming it away and just take full ownership of it and take back your power of like, hey, there are lots of things I can do to improve my circumstances. But again, I can, it's almost like I can hear you speaking back to us like, well, no, I can't. It's just like there's things in my body or it's my family or, or well, my this, past. it's my past. Well, this happened to me. So you can't. And, 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 and I've been told this to my face that I'm insensitive and thoughtless, and, and it's because I don't care, I don't get it, I don't understand. And what it is, it's like they just want to hold on to that victimhood. They want to stay in victimville. They, they just want to cl- dig in their their claws there and stay, like, you can't drag me out of victimville. I'm staying because I'm a victim. And I'm saying, like, no, you're giving away your power. Let go of any and all victimism. And that will be the first major step to really transforming your life and transcending your problems. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a massive introduction to talking about overcoming or transcending or outgrowing anxiety and depression and other, other mental illnesses. So I think it starts with saying um, some of the, the research that we've read and shown is that, that a vast majority of cases of anxiety and depression are not, um, not, uh, like, chemical imbalances. They're not, well, not that we're going to get to that, but it's not like some kind of physiological dysfunction. Mm-hmm. They're, they're finding the vast majority are coming from habits, patterns, lifestyle, right? Yes. So this Huge is, majority. to be specific, again, this is something you've believed for a long time, but this was just recent research that came out saying... Aha, it's not really some sort of physiological issue. It's related to your behaviors, your thought patterns, your habits, your actions. Wow, shocking. And this is, <laughs> and this like, is recent oh, yeah. research coming out of Europe, um, and it's, it's validated, solid stuff, peer-reviewed, awesome stuff, just saying, hey, it's, we've, we've been telling ourselves and telling others and sharing this all around that it's a chemical imbalance that's causing it. And that saying, needs actually, medication yeah, to handle. That needs to be medicated or refixed. And they're saying, nope, that's not accurate. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, we alter our biochemistry every day. Yes. Uh, through our habits, so our actions, So chemistry is food. involved. There is chemistry involved. And, and you and I, every single one of us, can do things right now immediately. If we were together in person, I could do things with you right now. We could go through exercises that would release cortisol and make us scared and mm-hmm. afraid. We could do things with our bodies and our minds to immediately induce fear and discouragement and depression. I, and again, our thoughts have energy. Our words have energy. I could start telling you stories and do things. Within five minutes, all of us would be crying and depressed and think there's no hope in the world. I could do that. <laughs> but guess what? In the next five minutes, I could turn everything around and think, geez, this is, this is the most glorious place on heaven and earth and like everything's great and everything is awesome and we'll sing songs and it'll all be rainbows and unicorns and we can shift our biochemistry and you could just be filled, absolutely flooded with dopamine and endorphins and serotonin and just feel like amazing, mm-hmm. so alive. And you can switch that in, in a few minutes to alter your biochemistry. So yes, there's biochemistry involved. But what we're saying emphatically is it's not some stuck, fixed, broken broken chemical problem inside of you that you've been told. And believing that, being playing the victim to that, is doing far more damage than, than the actual thing that could ever possibly be. Right. Besides the fact that the process you de- just described there of changing the biochemistry in your body by acting certain ways or thinking certain thoughts that when you do that on a regular basis, you actually program your body on a cellular level to expect more of certain types of chemicals than others. So if you look at the um, protein receptors of cells, they, they have these receptors to receive certain chemicals from the body. And depending on the chemicals your brain produces... Through habit. Through habit, through thinking that determines the type of receptors they create. So if you create a lot of cortisol, Cortisol. Mm -hmm. your body then becomes wired, literally, to expect and and addicted. I want to to emphasize that. Not only to expect it, at a cellular level, you become addicted 
to cortisol, to that chemical, which then produces depression. Yep. Now you can and do fear. the opposite. You could, and you can change this so that you program your body on a cellular level to expect and to become addicted to dopamine. That's where I live. <laughs> I'm a total addict. <laughs> I'm addicted, and and this is important to point out. I, like I literally am addicted to dopamine and serotonin and and naturally produced. Naturally, just to be yes, clear, yeah, I'm not taking any injections, but man, I'm taking hits from my brain all day, every day, and I love it. And and I want to emphasize this so much. I was not born that way. My life did not, uh, you know, come about on a, that. on a little platter. And it wasn't. I wasn't taught how to do this. In fact, I was the, it was the opposite. I was in a very unhealthy body and a very uh, a broken family and then out on my own at 16 in bad neighborhoods and rough things going on. And those were dark, lonely, desperate, discouraged, depressed, fearful, anxious times. And I was in a dark hole and just drudging through life, sometimes questioning if it was worth living. And when I realized, like, no, I get to, I get to choose here. This is a choice, and I don't want to live like that anymore. So then, then I started to climb out of it, and I reshaped everything. And I, you guys, I'm nobody special. If I can do it, anyone can do it. You can do it. And you're not the only one that's done that. Yeah, that's it happens like all the time. And, and those of you who don't know, that's, this is what Rachel and I do every day. We get to coach um, individuals, families, couples to do these kind of things, to change habits and patterns that just totally transform their lives. And we're not the only ones that does, do this either. Right. It's, it's massive. So there are lots and lots of people doing this. It's not rare. But sadly, uh, especially in the United States right now, the, the numbers of people who are taking on the identity of being depressed or having anxiety is off the charts. And well, so and, sad. and to be fair, it's not totally their fault because the entire system is in yeah. a way broken yeah. that if you feel these feelings of depression or anxiety and you go to get help, Generally, what they do is they try to medicate you. Mm -hmm. They believe that that's the answer. And that's only because, for whatever reason, which we aren't going to go into, the U.S. has is operating that way. Yeah. Where, like in like we're talking about, in Europe, they'll say, oh, well, tell me about your, what time do yeah. you get up? What time do you go to bed? Do you have a job? We're going to get into like, all that. <laughs> But here, here they're, perpe I like to say it like this, they are perpetuating the victimhood narrative. Yes. That's exactly what's going on. You go, and, and if you talk to your friends and your family, you jump on social media, oh, and like, oh, you poor thing, it's, it's not your fault, take some medication. Mm -hmm. Instead of, whoa, 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 let's dive into your life and your lifestyle and your habits and your patterns and let's and get into that and... and give you some tools. So is, is this stuff curable? Honestly, and this, this is bold, but honestly, for 98% of people, absolutely. Yep, you could totally transform this and, and have it just be gone. And maybe for you, that's just too much. You're like, well, that's, that's just way too far. And so then I would say, well, without a doubt in my mind, the things we're going to share today will at least make your life significantly better. If, if you do these things and you do them well, you can feel better, happier healthier. If nothing else, you just make vast improvements. You, you progress massively mm -hmm. in life if you're doing these things. And then, again, this isn't just our opinion. This is, this is solid stuff. Psychological, clin proven. clinical psychology proves this. Um, physiology. Physiology. I mean, it's it's yeah. all there. This is backed up. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's dive in. Um, I want to start with a thought from Corey Tenboom. She said, worry doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrows. It empties today of its strength. Ooh, that's good. That's good. And so, actually, I, I shouldn't have started there because I didn't. I want to start with the body first. But that, that's a tie-in there. I want to share that. That's, that ties into our thinking and what we're thinking. Let's just go with it. Let's just go with thinking. Okay. And, and what you're thinking, and, and you're thinking what I call, this is what I call mental management. So I, I refer to it as mental management. And it just clumps in everything. You're thinking patterns, it's you're also, thinking habits, your mindsets. Sorry. It's also called endophagia. Your yeah, self-talk. Self -talk. Yep. It's how you how talk you to yourself. How you talk to yourself, mm -hmm. the stories you tell yourself, 
the words you use, the way you identify yourself, your I am statements. Yep. I it, am starting with something as simple as I am depressed. That's an I am statement that becomes an identity mm -hmm. piece instead of I. I'm trying to word it now in a better way. Like I'm feeling depressed is even a little bit better, but like I'm having feelings of depression. That's temporary. When you say it that way, that's a temporary condition. Like something happened and I feel depressed about that. That's temporary. But when you say I am depressed, you've now taken on that identity of being a person who is depressed. Now we might think that that's not a big deal or it's just semantics that's there, huge. but the reality and the science shows that's a huge deal. Yep. It makes a huge difference. And so then what, what's interesting about the subconscious is so the, the conscious mind dictates to the subconscious mind what, what it happens, right? So literally your thoughts, you think into reality what's going to happen and the subconscious mind just goes to work for you. That's how the subconscious works. Mm -hmm. whatever, you, whatever thought you get with a lot of energy or emotion, and it could be positive or negative, goes in there and it starts to work for you. So if you say, I am depressed, and you take on that identity, then your subconscious mind's like, okay, well, let's work on that. Yeah, let's be the best depressed we can be. Yep, this is this is important <laughs> to you because I'm feeling it. Wow, all this all this chemical, all this emotion, like we're gonna we're gonna make sure this is a reality for you. And, and then if nothing else, what it does, it starts to pay attention to the things that make you more depressed. Yep. Because the way you think about it and feel about it identify or, or notify the, the subconscious of what it's supposed to focus on, what it's supposed to look for. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what starts happening. So now you start looking around and what do you see? Depression. Nothing but depressing things. Nothing but fearful, scary things to, to feed the anxiety. And to say, I have anxiety versus, oh, I, I'm feeling anxious or I'm having some anxious thoughts. But you, you, again, taking on that identity piece. And so we, we don't have the time in this particular episode to dive deep into those thinking patterns. We actually have, um, we actually have courses on this, included in our courses, and, and there's tons of wonderful books. I'd read Mindset by Carol Dweck. I'd read As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Mm -hmm. And there, there's so many more, just excellent, excellent books about, about psychology. Um, but you've got to get your thinking patterns and habits, the the meaning that you give things. So nothing in this life has meaning except the meaning that you give it. And again, back to this victimhood thing, if somebody walks up to me and slaps me in the face, most of us think, well, oh, there's only one thing you can think about that. There's only one way you can feel. And that's just not true. And if you take even 100 people, even, even 20 people, it's a small number, and they all have the same experience, they can all give it different meaning. Mm -hmm. And the meaning they give it determines what it means to them in their life and what effect it has on their life. And it's Some, also, sorry, ahead. also is determined by their past thinking mm -hmm. habits and, and behaviors and experiences. Yep. So it determines their future, but it's also determined by their past. Mm -hmm. Or can be. Yeah. But at any moment, we can draw the line and stop that. Mm -hmm. And so the main thing I want to emphasize, we want to emphasize today to you, wherever you are in your journey, you have total power to transform your life from the inside out. You are in control of your thinking. Now, you might not feel like you're in control because maybe you haven't practiced being in control. Maybe you've played a victim to your thoughts and you just think, I, I didn't think that. It just showed up. And maybe it does. Maybe sometimes that you have a crazy, oh, it's the, the, un, the, crazy the untethered soul. Yeah. He talks about the crazy roommate that just is going off in your head all the time saying the stupidest things. And, and we want to really emphasize this today. Please do not believe everything you think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do not give credence to everything your little crazy roommate up in your head says. Yeah. He's gonna, he or she will say the stupidest things all the time. What's interesting is you ask an audience, like, who's the voice in your head? And, and it'll be like, oh, it's my grandma, it's my mom, it's my dad. Oh, it's this, this ex-boyfriend that was so critical of me. And like, like what, what, what was, what's the negative voice in there? Who's in there? And it's these representations, these meanings from our past. Mm. But I have to emphasize this again and again and keep repeating it. You have total control, absolute total control. And when you change your thinking, you will quite literally change your life.
In fact, there's books by that title. Yeah. One, one by Wayne Dyer and one by Brian Tracy. And yeah. I would highly recommend both of them. Change your thinking, change your life. Change your thoughts, change your life. Those are great books teaching this very principle. Another one that we love is called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you guys, we just have to emphasize this. Like, you can alter your entire existence, the quality of your life, and everything you're experiencing if you will begin to manage your thinking and control and direct your thoughts. Don't let them run wild. Don't let them go crazy. Don't feed and nourish the, the fear or the discouraging or depressive thoughts or let your mind... It's It's amazing. You could be so creative, but you're letting your creativity run yeah. towards worst case scenarios. Destruction. Instead of, and your problems, instead of letting your creativity run towards yeah. solutions mm -hmm. and, and wonderful things. Well, I remember Wayne Dyer saying that one time. He's like, we often picture these worst case scenarios. He's like, you have the power. You have an imagination. Use it. Why don't we picture best case scenarios? And I think sometimes we're afraid to do that because we don't want to be disappointed. But like, if you're going to imagine something, why not imagine that instead of the worst case? Isn't that funny and, it and is. interesting? Yeah. Like, we're we're more likely to begin imagining worst case than best case because exactly. you might think, well, oh, the best case that's never going to happen. But then, well, why do we think the worst, worst case is going to happen? happen? But we're more likely to believe that. Exactly. Like, oh no, it's it's far more likely for things to be bad than to be good. And that's I know a that sad in reality. some ways that's simply a product of our evolution and our biology that it helps keep us alive when we think that could kill us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. It keeps us alive, but we have to train our brains yeah. to focus on the good so that we don't end up depressed all the time. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share really quick. Last night I was up, I was up late. I was packing to prepare to move to Portugal and our eight year old came out. She'd already gone to bed, but she came out and she was like, I, I was having some scary thoughts, Mom. I was thinking of scary things. And I said, okay. And I gave her a hug. And I said, well, you're in charge of your brain. You get to decide what you want to think. And she said, how do I do that? And I said, well, you just have to think about something else. You can think about something you like. You can sing a song. You can say a prayer. You can listen to music. And she it was like right away she was like, oh, okay. And she just went back to her room. Done. And a few minutes later, she did come back and she said, I would like to listen to some music. And so I did the password on her iPad so she could listen to music while she went to bed. But like that's, it's so simple that a child can understand it. And we sometimes want to complicate it. We want to make it harder than it is. But really, it is that simple. Yep. It's we thought. don't have to think the things that make us depressed. Yep. It's thought replacement. So when the thought arises, we replace it. When it rises again, we replace it. And we keep, we build this new habit, this new pattern, this new strength of being in charge of what's on the stage of your mind. Exactly. Whatever's popping on the stage, some random things will pop up. Whatever pops up, don't let it stay. Mm -hmm. Don't let it, like, build a house and, like, move in. Like, <laughs> you're, you're letting, you know, you're letting these crazy things take up precious mental real estate. And you're not even charging rent, man. Like, they're charging you rent and they're in there wreaking havoc kick those suckers out, give them an eviction notice, move them out and mm -hmm. build a palace of, of goodness in there. And you can do it with great input, with great books and great uh, podcasts and great videos. I mean, listening to this, you guys, good job. And do it again, memorizing things, songs. Mm -hmm. And again, be very, very careful about your input. Because if you're consuming the news all the time, the news is just negative. It's, and we're not faulting anyone, but negative news sells. Positive news just doesn't. So they, they're trying to have shock factor. That's what sells. So if you're watching the news, prepare to be negative and, and shocked all the time. Well, guess what that does to your brain? Cortisol, fear, depression. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. So our invitation is cut off the news completely. Done. Just, just cut it out of your life. You're like, oh, but I have to stay informed. Trust me. If anything significant <laughs> happens, everyone you will tell will you know. about it. There's no way you can't not know. So cut out the news from your life. Cut out any uh, dark, discouraging, depressing, negative um, movies or music. There's so much dark music, so many messages. They're just so pathetic. Cut that crap out of your life so that you have a steady flow of, of good, positive things. So, I, I mean, there's say, more to this. I would say specifically, especially if you're struggling with depression yeah. and anxiety and you're trying to make a change, yes, definitely yeah. do that. Yep. Definitely Absolutely. do those things. Cut it all out. Cut it all out. Because it's worth it. I mean, doing that is worth it. Not getting on medication, yes. not not being depressed all the time. Yeah, you're. You know what? You're right. We I forgot to 
to hit something that's is critically important here. This is this is indispensable. If 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 any of this stuff is going to work for you, you have to sincerely with real hunger, you have to want to overcome it. You have to want to transcend. You have to want to be in charge of your thinking and your feeling. You have to want to be happy and jovial. Because there's, it's going to take effort and discipline. Maybe jovial is a little much. Okay, you, know, you have to be jovial then if you don't want to be. I want to be jovial. I think mean, it's a great way to do life. But just... It, maybe you're not even like, I don't want to be bouncing off the walls happy either. That's annoying. Okay, whatever. Like if you just want to be pleasant, you want to have joy. If you want to just have peace. You have to want it. And I mean really want it. Not like, oh, that would be nice. No. Like I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And I'm listening today. And whatever these guys say, I'm going to at least try it. I'm going to try it for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. Try it for 60 days. Here's our test. Do this stuff we're recommending. Just try it. And you're like, it won't work. It won't. Oh, yeah? Prove me wrong. Like, seriously, prove me wrong. Do this wholeheartedly with everything you got, consistency, 60 days, and watch how it just transforms your life. And I think part of the problem that people don't do this ties directly into the culture we have here in the United States, specifically, with we want the easy solution. Yeah. We literally do. We want the pill. We don't want to have to give up the food that we enjoy that's not good for us or the habits we have that aren't good for us. There are many people, and we personally know people that are like, eh, no, it's not worth it. I'd rather just be happy. Yep. <laughs> Which is and ironic because it doesn't sick work. And miserable. Yep. Then give up and do the hard work required in order to be truly happy yep. and because truly fulfilled. We fear that change is too much work. It seems so painful to change. And it's just, again, that's just our, that's the survival brain talking, telling us that, oh, it's going to be so hard. And it's not. It really isn't. And once you get into it, the first couple of days might be feel different because you're trying to make changes. And your body's like, oh, this is change. This is new. Oh, new, scary. This is terrible. Let's go back to what we're familiar with. And like, no, stop doing that. But if you want it and, and you get into it, it, it'll change you. And I think it's important right here to point out, like, the research is also showing that the medication actually doesn't work. It would be one thing if antidepressants yeah. actually made people not depressed, but how many of you know someone or you yourself have been on antidepressants and, guess what, still depressed? And, that and that's what the science is showing, that yeah. they're just not working. And I think you're going to talk about the study they did that shows what does work instead. Yeah. So... Well, and, and it's, I, I guess I, I want to emphasize this and reemphasize this. It's not working. Like the medications aren't working. They're just altering your brain, brain chemistry. And Dr. Daniel Amen goes into this a lot. You can look at his, he's got videos on YouTube. He has excellent books. Again, here it is. If you're serious about this, read all of Dr. Damon's books. He gives you all the research in there and it backs up all this stuff. Read his stuff, read everybody else, just devour it all and, and get in there. And so you know what you're talking about, but it's like, he's like the, those, all that medication is just literally, it's altering your brain chemistry and your brain makeup so it makes you more addicted to those drugs. Mm -hmm. it's, they're, they're designed so you have to keep taking them, and they're not even helping you get the things you want. Right. So it would be one thing if we were like, don't take the pills. You need to do this instead. But the pills worked. <laughs> you know? what? We don't have an argument there. But the pills don't work. They're not working. They're not stopping people from being depressed. And, in most cases, and, they're just numbing them. Yeah, numbing. But then here is the scientific evidence of what actually works, but you have to want it and you have yep. to do it. So one example. It's all, it all comes down to you. Exactly. This ownership. Which is awesome. It all comes back to ownership. You are in total power. You can alter your life if you want. You can overcome any of this stuff if you want to. And you do this thing. So um, one of the one of the things they found is they wanted to measure medication versus exercise, and so they took these two groups for specifically people that were depressed. Yep, for people who were, and I think clinical clinically depressed, right? And so they're rolling along, and they they put some on medication, they put some on an exercise routine, and it's vigorous exercise. So it's like HIT trainings, right? High intensity interval trainings, and just vigorous exercise, just moving your body, which we don't have time to get into all the the chemistry and biology of that, but just exercising, move your body. Your body's like a dynamo. And so you move it, boom, it produces all this energy. It gets the blood flowing, and your body operates on blood. And so you have good oxygenated blood flowing through, and it goes to your brain, and it lights up your brain. Your brain lights up like a Christmas tree with all this oxygenated blood, and it's like, whoa, this is great. 
right? But you have to move your body enough to get that result. So they wanted to measure it. And they found that exercise performed slightly better than medication up to a certain point, like the first several weeks. And so then you're like, oh, okay, so, you so know, it's, it's, it's about the same. As but it has its pill. limitations. But you have to actually, you know, move your body and exercise. So that's a downside. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. what's well, the, the exchange rate? Yeah, right. take the pill, right? But it actually performed better. At, in a, at a short term, it performed better. So you're like, okay, I don't have to take medication. I take exercise. It, it's slightly better. But then they found in the long term, exercise performed way better. The Produced. results, yeah. Better results are overcoming depression, right, and and mitigating depression. So, mm-hmm. so a long term habit of exercise, it works. It just makes you feel better, like significantly. Yeah, and your body and your brain start working how they should be, and you get your body in a condition, and your brain in condition that it should be. It's just amazing. This so so exercise matters, and I would say, I would vigorous exercise five times a week. Um, do something you love to do. If it's just a grind, if you wake up and like. I have to do burpees every morning at 5 a.m. That sucks. That <laughs> That's makes not me depressed. Help with your <laughs> That's not going to help. But find something you love to do and do it. And again, if you don't think, if, if you're sitting here, I know some of you are skeptical and cynical, and you're sitting here like, you denning idiots. You're so ignorant. You just think exercise will take care of my problem. And, and we're sitting here saying, yep. Prove me wrong. That's not our opinion. <laughs> But if you don't believe the science and the research and all this stuff, prove me wrong. Go ahead and do it. Exercise vigorously for 60 days. And, and for you, skeptic, do it every single day. And I'm actually to challenge for you for being so skeptical. <laughs> do it with a smile. Listen to positive, uplifting music or books and smile. In fact, listen to all of it. Start at the very beginning of this podcast, episode one, and listen to the whole podcast. And series. listen to the whole series and listen to um, the Be The Man podcast too. All of them. And all, all the guys I have on there and all the, these amazing interviews I'm doing. Just listen to all that. That is good. I know it's all good positive content. And you listen to that stuff and listen to good music and you work out and you force yourself to smile and you'll feel goofy and silly. And guess what? That actually makes you feel good and happy. And do this. Test it. Prove me wrong, man. Prove me wrong. Well, just to emphasize this a little bit because you're talking about the smiling because that was another scientific study done this one was done a long time ago of people who were clinically depressed and again they took two groups one was just taking the medication and the other was supposed to smile in the mirror for 20 minutes every day with a big cheesy grin and that significantly improved levels of depression they all came off medication yeah, they all. all came off medication just by smiling in the mirror 20 minutes For a 20 day. Minutes. And and you start laughing and you feel ridiculous and I'm what, laughing now. I know me too and it starts releasing serotonin and even if you if you're a pictionist right now and you're smiling this big cheesy smiley grin, can you feel like most of us aren't aware enough of our biochemistry? Like if you were to swing your arms, do some jumping jacks, jump around, put on a song and just smile big cheesy, like I can feel my biochemistry altering right now. I can mm-hmm. feel my brain releasing serotonin by having a big cheesy smile. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And you can do that in a moment. You can choose when you're starting to uh, down like, no, 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 no. I'm going to put on my favorite song. I'm going to big cheesy grin. We're going to tell some jokes. We're going to laugh at some stuff. Like I'm, I'm altering my state. Mm-hmm. And maybe you have like a favorite comedian or, or funny videos. And when you're starting to, you feel yourself mentally starting to slip. Just turn that and just turn it into laughter and and hugging, like touch, like hugging and dancing and jumping around and smiling, big cheesy grins. And you're like, this is dumb. It's so silly. You guys are like elementary kids. And for, yeah, <laughs> you're right. You're sitting there slunched over, small breasts, head down. And you're like, this is so dumb. You guys don't know what you're talking about. And it, you feel it. You feel the drain out of you and you feel the cortisol in the darkness where you're like, okay, try it. Put me wrong. Smile. If, and again, the circling back. Do you really want this? Do you really want to change? Then every day when you wake up, go smile a cheesy grin in the mirror for 20 minutes. Do it. Prove it wrong. Well, and I know part of the resistance to doing this for some people, because I know I felt there was resistance for too, is it becomes out of character. Right. You don't want to do it because you know people are going to notice and they're going to say something. And you don't want them to say something like, oh, why are you so happy? Yeah. Why are you smiling? 
we're afraid of that. We're afraid of breaking character, which comes back to this identity piece. Like we now identify ourselves as a depressed person. It becomes who we are. And, and you're if we connecting change with that, other depressed people and yeah, other anxious people. Exactly. And now it's your identity. Right. And if you change that and start acting and behaving differently, people start looking at you differently. And, and, and your even depressed you. friends yeah, yeah. are going to be like, oh, why are you so you, happy? You think you're better than us? What's your problem? You're so weird. Yeah, so it becomes almost this... Self -sab it is a self-sabotage where, like, I don't want to break character here because people are going to notice. Yep. And to that I say, man, break character. Destroy it. You have, it comes back to you have to decide what yep. you actually really want. Create a totally new identity and a new um, reputation. I had to do this. Is it, you guys, I'm telling you, all this stuff I went through, I did it all myself, these experiments. And I was like, you know what? I have to become a new person. I literally have to become a new person. All the people that knew me before... I'm going to be different to them, and they're, they're going to still expect me to be the old way and behave the old ways, do the old things. I'm like, no, I'm a smiley, jovial, happy, energized person. I make the energizer bunny look like a sloth. Mm. <laughs> like, I'm going after it because I want that's the kind of life I want to live, right? And I'm not saying you need to be like me, no. but I'm, I, what I am saying is like, get to a place where you want to be, where you just actually feel so you fantastic fantastic about yourself and your life yeah so that you're the person you want to be yeah, whatever version, version of, you. of happy that whatever that version of happy looks like exactly that's the point yep. beautiful okay let's shift gears here food is the other thing so any any good psychologist or psychiatrist in in the world who's worth anything <laughs> um and I'm, I, I'm i'm pretty what's the word cynical i'm quite so against that industry um, and I know this is going to sound unpopular <laughs> and maybe I'm rude I'm not trying to be rude here I'm genuinely not trying to be rude the bulk of psychologists and psychiatrists need therapy and um, I don't want to sound like that's a bad thing right because going to going to counseling therapy is excellent right it's really good but it's like they, they don't have their stuff put together. They don't, they don't have their lives figured out. They're, most of them are not in a good, happy, healthy, solid place. And I heard of a, a, a professor. He was, he was teaching future, these people were in the school to get their psychiatry license. And he was like, look, 98% 98 of you are in trouble. You, you all need therapy. Like, like this is not, <laughs> like you're in trouble here. And, and they're just doing it as a profession and they're not in a spot. So... Um, and I say that it's with love and kindness, but with a little bit of, of constructive criticism, like they're not in a, in a good spot to be doing this. But the ones who are, one of the first things they'll ask you when you walk through the door is, what are you eating? Tell me about your diet. Because they have found again and again and again, the ones who are aware of it, that food is affecting our brains. And duh, duh, right? You're like, well, of course it is. But if we don't understand, if we don't understand the biology, if we don't understand physiology, we think, oh, we have, okay, it affects your brain, it affects your body, but how much? And what they're finding is, like, if you if you have refined sugar coming in, um, oils, like cooking oils, vegetable, uh, vegetable seed oils, oil. seed oils coming in, uh, fast foods, processed foods, uh, chemicals, food coloring, um, all, all these different preservatives and chemicals that are going in our foods, they are just Which wrecking our bodies and our brains specifically. Which fills pretty much everything we eat nowadays. Right. Like there's hardly anything you can buy at the store that's not filled with this, these toxins. So based on previous research, I feel extremely confident that some of you who are struggling with depression, anxiety, or other uh, mental, emotional issues, just by changing your diet and, and, and really improving your diet, some of you will experience a, a total change just by diet like and and of course the exercise and all the other good stuff and thinking patterns that all help but some of you it's food related and dr amen tells stories about this i mean all all the people who are doing these these clinics that are doing these things are telling stories about it because it's real they have clients come in and they're like this client was super reactive to corn and this client was super reactive to the food coloring red like number 40. 40 or whatever and this one to msg and and total like behaviors like th they have kids come in and and they're like oh this kid has add or adhd or he's he's violent or whatever and the doctor's like well, let's try his diet and like let's take him off this and boom they're gone totally different kid 
Completely different kid, different behavior, different attitudes, like everything, peaceful, great, happy, jovial, everything starts functioning because the brain was reacting to a certain food. Mm -hmm. Now that becomes really chronic and really problematic. Um, they found that low fat diets induced depression because the, the brain is fat. It and operates it needs, on fat. Yeah, it needs healthy fat and it needs good food. It takes up about 20% of what you consume goes to the brain. And yet the brain's only like 3% of the body. It just weighs a few pounds, right? It's just it's tiny. Mm -hmm. And yet it takes up so much and it's consuming that. So if you're living on Mountain Dew and donuts, you're just wrecking it. No wonder you feel like crap. Mm -hmm. No wonder you can't think straight and, and there's just darkness in there all the time or whatever. Um, one guy that came into Dr. Amon's clinic, he was like, he's just violent. He's violent, dark, like killing himself and, and fascinated with killing Thoughts other people. That. And then his was, his specifically was corn. They just went back to zero and like, let's start introducing food at a time. He's like, man, I haven't felt this great in so long. And, and then he had something of corn in it and he's like, boom, right, right back. Those dark, violent thoughts. And he's like, okay, hey, it's, it's corn. So our invitation here, and again, you have to want this. If I'm sitting with you and you're like, yes, I want to be happy. I want to be peaceful. I want to direct my thoughts. I want to enjoy my life. Then I'm saying, okay, you ready? And, and if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if I was like your coach or your trainer, you came to live with us or whatever, and I'm like right there, I'm your next door neighbor, we're going to be exercising vigorously. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be eating clean, good food in the right amounts. No overeating. They're also finding when you get obese, um, your brain actually shrinks. So the, the fatter you get, the more your brain shrinks. Well, what happens to a shrinking brain? Is it going to function normally? No, it can't. They found that you're drinking alcohol regularly, and this is some really cool research just came out on that. Um, uh, Uberman, on the Uberman podcast, he just did a whole thing on alcohol, what alcohol is doing. And people were like, no, isn't wine supposed to be good for you? It's like, no, because in order to get any kind of benefit from, benefit from it, you'd have to drink so much of it that it would just have massive negative consequences on your brain. So he just debunked everything. He's like, if you drink alcohol, even in, even in small amounts, he's like, but definitely if you're regularly drinking it, you have a glass every night with dinner or three times a week, he's like, there is direct evidence that it is making, uh, it is damaging. And, neural connections? And, yeah, neural connections, all the brain function, everything. So it's off. And, and they see huge divots. They can now take pictures of your brain. So they're, they're looking at people who are smoking, people who are drinking alcohol, caffeine. Sugar. came up on this sugar comes up on it magnet like preserve all this stuff they can see the effect on the brain so they take a picture and they're like yeah your brain has all these divots in it because you've been eating this stuff cut that out and slowly over time it'll fill back in and get back to a healthy full mm -hmm. brain and guess what you'll think better and you'll, you'll feel, feel better, better. Right? it's amazing so yeah we're, we're what we're saying here is you got to transform what you're eating and so, and then last thing, we, we got to hit sleep. And again, we're just touching on this. So if you guys want to go, want us to go on it quickly. deeper into any one of these, or perhaps all, we can do is a whole series on this stuff. And, and you guys, I've been taking notes. I have a file um, on anxiety and depression. I've been writing in for years and just collecting data and research. And oh man, it's just, it's packed. I'm sitting here looking at it thinking, I want to share it all. <laughs> but um, our friends were flying back from South Africa and they have a big layover here. And so they spent the day with us, and he had he's become a sleep expert. He had his own sleep clinic for seven years. And we talked about the effect of sleep, and that even just being a little low on REM sleep, for example, the effect that has on the brain and on the body. And it was unbelievable. So if you're staying up late and getting poor sleep and low quantity sleep, not enough sleep, so it's, it's low quality and low quantity, it is just causing, it, again, it's, it's multifaceted, habit. right? It's multifaceted. It's all these things together. It, it, it's detrimental to the brain and brain function and healthy thinking. So again, I, I, I feel like I could almost sit down with any one of you and like, if you're fully committed, you promise me you'll do everything I tell you to do and you'll do it with consistency and you'll be all in, not just going through emotions, checking the boxes, you'll be all in and you do this stuff, it will transform. It, it can, it has the power to totally transform your life. But that means you're going to bed at a decent hour and it's, it's well before midnight. Like you gotta get in bed. You gotta sleep well, and so you gotta set things up. So it means you're getting off screens well before bed. It means you stop eating a few hours before bed. It means you're, you're doing peaceful things. To, you're strategically and intentionally, deliberately 
like putting good thoughts into your head and your body and your brain, and you're setting yourself up to sleep well. And most of you listening, I know because I know this because I work with so many people on a regular basis, like you have terrible sleeping habits. You have terrible eating habits. You have terrible input habits. And then you have terrible self-talk habits. So it's like every time I talk to someone, I'm like, they're like, yeah, I'm feeling like this. I'm like, let me guess. Let me just say a guess here. This, 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 and this. And they're like, yeah, how'd you know? It's like it's the pattern. It's, it's just this pattern. It's there. But Greg... <laughs> It's just so overwhelming to try and do all of those things. It's so much easier to just maintain my identity as being depressed and take pills. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's way more overwhelming to be depressed and anxious. You think you think changing is hard, try staying. And and again I have to ask, like, what does this look like? If you stay the course you're on, what does it look like a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now? Think about that thoroughly. Write about it. Where does this lead? If you don't make behavioral changes, where does this lead? And again, what do you have to lose, right? If you're down, like just test it. Put it to a test. Try us. Try to prove us wrong. Let's go all in. Like 60 days. None of the things we're asking you to do will, will harm you. <laughs> not, <laughs> not one of them. Yeah, I, no. You'll be better off in a lot of ways, right? You do all this stuff, you will be better off. Try it. And if you really want it, make, give that transformation. And so, again, this, we break it down. It's really actually quite simple. Yes. Exercise and, and, vigorously. And I'm playing the devil's advocate here a little the bit. The devil does I, not need an advocate, I know, dear. I know, but still. <laughs> because I know that people can feel that way. Like, it feels like so much. It feels too much. It, it feels difficult to get out of bed. Like, how am I going to do all of these things you're right. talking about? Right. And ultimately, it starts by doing the one thing that you can do right now. Maybe that's changing your thought. Yeah. I, I remember I came across this thing years ago, this saying that I, I used. It was like, whatever I think, think the opposite. And so I started doing that. If I had a thought, I, I switched it, and I literally thought the opposite. That's helpful. Start thinking the opposite thoughts. Start just going out for a walk yep. or getting outside of your front door. Yep. Like Just start with what you can, and that builds the momentum. Yes. Oh my goodness, there's so much more to this. You made me think about stuff. Getting outside. First thing in the morning, get outside and, and early morning sunlight, just transformative. Huge. Another big benefit. It's a small thing, makes a big difference. Breathing. Most of us have shallow chronic breathing. So if you step out on the front porch and take some big deep breaths, maybe 30 deep breaths, that right there, you're just pumping all this good oxygen up to your brain. Your brain's going to feel better because it mm-hmm. operates on oxygen. Like just that. Like it's so simple. So you're ready to take right, action. So I think the point is like, we understand that the, the, the hardest part for you is going to be overcoming the inertia yeah, you're exactly. in. You are in the inertia of de- depression and anxiety. But you can begin to overcome it by, just by starting to do one thing. Yep. The one thing that you think you can do. And, and the, the thing that, I guess, made the biggest difference for me was this, this simple switch. I stopped acquiescing to how I happened to feel. For example, if like, well, I don't feel like it. I just started saying, well, nobody asked if you felt like it or not. This is good for you. Do it. Well, I don't feel like it. I don't care. This is how I talk to myself. Because the voice, the roommate's like, I don't feel like it. I don't care if you don't feel like it. That's my response. I don't feel like working out. I don't care. Working out's good for you. Well, I feel like eating donuts. Donuts aren't good for you. I don't care. Like, well, I just want to sit down and do nothing. I don't care what you feel like doing. Stupid roommate, you're wrecking my life, right? <laughs> like, if you don't get off the couch, I'm going to make you do push-ups till you're blue in the face. Let's go. And, and you have to stop, stop living your life on how you happen to feel in the moment. Right. That's leading to all your trouble. Because you mm-hmm. don't feel like it. So you do this. Well, then you because, definitely don't feel like it. Right, because the depression makes you not feel like doing anything. And so you stop doing the things that are actually going to help you get out of the depression. It's this very vicious cycle. And all you have to do is step aside of it. Yeah. I want to make it seem uh, like it is simple. And some of it's actually easy, you guys. It's not that hard. You could go to bed early tonight and sleep well. And then you could get up in the morning and start with a really positive, peaceful morning routine. And then you could exercise. Then you could read some good books that we recommended. And you could eat some good, healthy meals. And then you start by writing down, recognizing your thoughts. So you just open, you, you just grab a notebook and you start writing down what you're thinking. You're going to be shocked as you start bringing in awareness of like, holy cow, I, 
I actually think these negative things and you write them down and you're like, that's not even true. And that's actually like actually putting it on a paper. That's, that's really stupid. How have I been thinking that for so long? This is ridiculous. And then, then next to it, you write down, what would I rather think? Well, I'd rather think this. Could that be true? Either one of those could be true. So why not believe the better one? I'm going to write that down. I'm going to repeat that to myself. Mm-hmm. And then all, like you start doing this stuff and within, within hours, within days, you could feel so much better. And we've helped people through this. I, I, we've, we've experienced it ourselves. We've helped people through it. And, and they'll come back like, I can't believe how good I feel. This, 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 mm-hmm. I've had, this is the great best week I've had in years. This is incredible. And it's just these simple shifts. And so you get into the new patterns and you stay with them. And then like the compound effect, you can either compound your effect into fear and darkness and depression, or you can compound effect yourself up into happiness, joy, peace. Uh, contentment, mm-hmm. pleasure, excitement, right? And man, this stuff's powerful. So, and it just begins by overcoming the inertia and doing, just starting to do one thing yeah. that you can do. Love it. Rachel's so good at, at the one thing <laughs> step because she's that's how she rolls. She's like, well, I can do one thing, and me, I'm like, I'm gonna do it all. I can do it all, and I'm starting now, <laughs> right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm. You guys so know this about me. I'm the perspective. I'm the inside the baby steps are for babies philosophy yes. like stop with your dadgum baby steps and change your life and you literally could change your life tomorrow i promise i've but done it i've helped others do it but you could take, take you could take the long road <laughs> and, and get there too and it still works do. so whatever you got to do however much you want it get after it make it happen love you guys thanks for being here um share this this will be helpful for a lot of people so share it with people you know and love and who you care about Get it out there with them. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and and reach out to us. Connect with us on social or send us messages, wherever. And if there's more you want us to share about this, we're happy to dive into it. Love you guys. Reach up.